In this video, we're going to use Deoldifier, which is a type of software that allows us to colorize old black and white photos. The link to this notebook is in the video description. Click on the link and Colab should open. Here you can see I have the notebook already open. Notice that RAM and disk are already showing, so it means I'm connected to a runtime. If you're not connected, just click connect. Google Colab notebooks are a lot like recipes. There are sets of instructions that should be performed in sequence in order to obtain a certain result. The table of contents shows the steps I'll need to perform in order to colorize images. In this first step, we need to verify that we have the correct runtime type. It says that we need a runtime type of Python 3, which we already have, and a hardware accelerator of GPU. So let's go into the menu and select runtime and then change runtime type. And it looks like I already have a GPU runtime set up. But if you don't, select GPU and then click Save. Make sure that your runtime has restarted, initialized, and is already connected. In the second step, we're going to mount our Google Drive. So run the cell. Now this time we've gotten a warning saying that this notebook was not authored by Google. Almost all of the notebooks that we're using in this course were not authored by Google. It's fine, you can just click Run anyway. Now to mount my drive, I have to click this URL in the browser, select my account, allow, copy the security code, paste and press enter, and now my drive is mounted at Content Drive. Looking at the file browser, I can see that my drive is mounted under Drive, and then My Drive. Great. Next step, we're going to copy the code for Deoldify from GitHub. So run the cell. All right, we copied the files. If we look at the file browser and click Refresh, we'll see the folder that we downloaded, Deoldify. Inside the folder is all the code we need to run Deoldify. Next, we're going to change directory into Deoldify, cd Deoldify. Currently, we're in the content directory, and we want to change directory to Deoldify. OK, now we're in the Deoldify directory. Now we can go to Setup. Let's run the first cell. All right, let's go to the next cell that says pip install. Run it. Whoa, and suddenly there's a wall of text. Don't worry about it, it's just installing a lot of software that we need. Okay, the cell is run. And because we've installed software, it says you must restart the runtime in order to use newly installed versions. So click the Restart Runtime button, and then click Yes. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see that our runtime is restarting. OK, it's showing RAM and disk again, so we're connected. Once we restart, we lost all of our local variables, and we're also back into our original content directory. So let's change directories back into Deoldify. OK, we're back into the Deoldify directory. Let's keep going. OK, that cell worked. I'm going to download some models. We're going to download a watermark image. Finally, we'll get the image colorizer. OK, as you can see in the table of contents, we've come pretty far. We're in the instructions section now. There are four variables that we can use to change the output of the colorizer algorithm. So source URL, that's a website URL that we can use to download an image and colorize it. Alternatively, we can use source path if we want to colorize an image that's on our Google Drive or in our current runtime. 
Render factor is a number that controls the resolution at which the color portion of the image is rendered. So depending upon the render factor, you can get a lot of different results. Watermarked controls whether or not to add a watermark to the image. There's actually a lot of controversy about machine learning generated images. One idea is to add a watermark to each image that is generated by software so that people know immediately that it's not a real image. All right, we can finally have some fun and colorize an image. So I'm going to look for an image on Google Images. Let's search for Lucy Reed. OK, I found a great image of Lucy Ree. Let me click on the image and open the website. Oh, there's lots of great photos here. Actually, I'll choose this image instead. So open this image in a new tab. And in the browser location bar, I'm going to copy the URL. Now we go back to our Colab notebook and paste the URL into the source URL field. OK, for render factor, we'll just keep it at the default and we'll add a watermark. OK, let's run this cell. Now I could speed up the video here, but I want you to get an idea of how long running some of these cells is going to take, especially when we're generating images. Some cells can take minutes, some can take hours. This one didn't actually take too long, and here we have a great colorized image of Lucy Ree. Here's the original black and white version, and next to it is the colorized version. So that we can better understand how render factor affects the image quality, let's run this next cell. This cell is going to use the same source image of Lucy Ree to generate a number of different color versions at different render factor values. OK, well, this cell is going to take a really long time. I'm just going to stop it. All you have to do is hover over the spinning dot and click it. That will stop the cell. All right, so we stopped the cell. And you can see that it did generate some images at different render factor values. It just didn't complete all of them. So here's a render factor of 12, 14, 16, 20. And you can definitely see the color difference between the render factor of 10 versus, say, 20. So if you have some extra time, you can run that cell until it completes, and then look at all of the render factor values to see which render factor you prefer. OK, besides render factor, there was the watermarked argument. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner of the image that there is a watermark. Now, say we're really satisfied with this image and we want to save it. How do we do that? Well, you can just right click on the image, click Save Image As, and then save it on your computer. Now, what happens if we want to colorize an image that's on our local computer or on our Google Drive? I'm going to go into my files and just drag and drop an old black and white photo into my notebook. And remember, this file is going to be deleted once the runtime is recycled. OK. My image is uploading. Once it's uploaded, it appears in my files. Double clicking, I can view the image. Now, how do I colorize it? Click the three dots and then copy path. Now I can go into source path and paste and remove the old source URL. OK, run the colorize cell again. This black and white image is quite large, so this might take a while. All right, we have a colorized image of my old family photo. Here you can see the black and white version and the colorized version. If I want to save the image, just right click and click Save Image As. 
And finally, if we want to colorize an image that's on our Google Drive, just open up the Drive folder, My Drive, and then select the image, click the three dots, and then Copy Path. Paste the path into the source path, and then rerun the cell again. So I hope this video showed you how to use a real-world Google Colab notebook to do things like colorize images. If you ran into any problems running this Google Colab notebook, or if you just have some colorized images that you want to share with us, I hope you'll join us in the Slack workspace for the class. Thanks.